You welcome to Politics HQ on New Central TV tonight. We delve into the intricate web of the Nigerian political scene. It's always drama every single day. Tonight we're spotlighting the contentious Kano State gubernatorial election saga at the New Nigeria People's Party, the NNPP, an opposition party in Nigeria, finds itself in a legal tangle over a certified true copy of the Court of Appeals judgment which sparked controversy uh, over the purported victory of its candidate. Amidst claims and counterclaims, allegations of nullity in the candidacy and clerical errors by the Court of Appeal, the situation in Kano State remains intense, heightened by recent protests amid a ban on demonstrations by the police. Which of the CTCs, because a new one has been released, do we take? Is Governor Yusuf of the NNPP, was he a judge by the Court of Appeal as the winner of that case or not? Joining us tonight as we explore the complexities and implications of this intriguing legal and political storm are Ladipo Johnson is a lawyer and spokesperson for the New Nigeria People's Party Presidential Camp Campaign Council. He's also the national auditor of the New Nigeria People's uh, Party. We're glad to have you join us. Also, Abdul Salam Kani is a political an analyst and he joins us via video link from County. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. All right, let's start this way um, with uh, Ladipo Johnson. Um, Mr. Johnson, the... All right, we do not have uh, Ladipo Johnson as that now. We'll go to... All right, we also have Ismail Awal, who is a political analyst as well. He's in Kano. Uh, Ismail, good evening to you. What's your take on the series of unfolding events ever since uh, that copy of uh, the Court of Appeals judgment, the CTC, uh, fell into the hands of the new Nigeria People's Party, and it was revealed that um, what we had that the courts had decided was not what was they saw on their paper. What's your reaction, your take on that? Well, uh, actually, my reaction for that will be, uh, of course, that is a very, very serious blunder from the uh, Court of Appeal, from the Appeal Court. And it's a blunder that shouldn't be seen with professionals. And talking of professionals here, we are talking of uh, judges. That shouldn't have been the case. But, but notwithstanding, I also felt, felt that uh, the whole drama and the whole noise that uh, people are making up around what uh, the APC and the NNPP shouldn't have been the case. Because here we are talking about 72 pages document, and out of that 72 pages, it was a mistake, of course, a very grievous one, as I already mentioned in uh, just two paragraphs, or let's, let me say a page. So, uh, of course, there was a blunder from the side of the judges or from the side of the appeal court. And also, I also found people that read that page in isolation. So, and uh, what the, uh, of course, I understand this lack of trust between the people and also the, uh, the judiciary, uh, the judiciary, but, uh, but all of us that are following up with the issue will have seen at the point that uh, the Court of Appeal has asked what the two parties, that EPC and the NNP, to come for clarification of what is called the clerical error. So, largely, this is my uh, understanding of the issue with the document. Uh, I, I want to get you clearly uh, a while. Are you saying that, as far as you're concerned, the NNPP um, uh, certified true copy is is um, uh, is the right one or or what? I just want to understand you. Uh, we know mm. that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's the right one. What I'm saying is there was a mistake in document, as rightly pointed out by the Court of Appeal, and I said that mistake shouldn't have been looking at the sensitivity of the matter in hand. And I was also saying that people should also stop reading a 72 pages document, 
people shouldn't they just agree to two paragraphs and also they make making confusion because if you, you you sit down and read the 72 pages document with all the eight cases raised by uh, the judges and also treated i think that particular uh paragraphs those particular paragraphs or those particular pages shouldn't have raised the most the, 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 the noise going around but politics is politics all right Okay, um, let's take a big, a quick uh, uh, pack report, and uh, we'll come back and we'll continue with this uh, um, uh, conversation. Ladipo Johnson is also standing by to join us. He's of the NNPP. Stay with us. Right, welcome back. We're still looking at the unfolding situation in Kano State, where, of course, the New Nigeria People's Party uh, has uh, said that they have uh, in their possession a certified true copy that shows that uh, the judgment of the Court of Appeal was in the favor of the uh, governorship candidate uh, Abba or the, their candidate, who is now governor of Kano State, Abba Yusuf. Ismail Awal is still with me. He's a political analyst and he joins us from Kano State. Ismail, um, you were talking about the, um, the alibi or the response uh, of the uh, the Court of Appeal, who said through their chief registrar, Umar uh, Banga, uh, that a clerical error occurred in the portion uh, of that certified true copy um, of their judgment, which, of course, Governor Yusuf and the NMPP are claiming yeah. validates the, his victory. So what's your take on that? Um, a clerical error. Uh, and he said that the parties need to apply to him or to the court again so that that can be rectified. What's your take on that? You touched on it, but I wanted to go into it a bit more. Well, I, as I rightly mentioned earlier, uh, a, a, a mistake or an error like that shouldn't have come from the Court of Appeal. And uh, also looking at the sensitivity of the issue here, we are talking about unseating an incumbent governor. And uh, in a city or in a state like Kano, that's a very, very serious issue. And uh, a mistake like that, whether clerical or not, shouldn't have been on that document. And uh, you see, maybe you will notice that I have never seen a situation or even had a situation whereby a common man is as interested as he is with a case or with a judiciary case, like people are interested in these cases with regard to Kano governorship, uh, governorship election. That only should should have informed the the, the, the court of appeal to be very very careful with a document that's as sensitive as the the, the document is just released. But Nigeria being Nigeria, somebody there sat down and made that serious mistake. And one thing about very funny about the document is at that very page where the mistake was the clerical mistake was the judge there was a signature of the judge in the registrar so that's that's very very disappointing all right and it's all right yeah. let's look at the reaction before that um uh, how does a clerical error occur to the extent that, I mean, I'm looking at a page of that CTC uh, put out by the NNPP, that a clerical error occurs when you say maybe, I don't know, um, or some would say typographical, like it was said before, uh, one word, one, two words, a letter, you know, maybe an S, when it should be without an S, plural, singular. This, this is... Um, it, it goes beyond just one sentence. It talks about who won the case. It says, in the circumstances, I resolve all the issues in favor of the appellant against the first respondent. And of course, it was uh, uh, Governor Abba Yusuf and the NPP appealing. Uh, I find no merit in this appeal. That's the appeal that was decided on by the tribunal, uh, which is liable to be and is hereby dismissed. Second sentence. And it says, the judgment of the tribunal in the petition, blah, 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 
All Progressives Congress versus INEC uh, and two others delivered on the 20th day of September 2023 is hereby set aside. Sentence three. And it says the sum of one million naira only is hereby awarded uh, in costs in favor of the appellant against the first respondent. That's the person appealing from uh, the tribunal's decision, which is Governor Yusuf. Um, so uh, how, it, how, what kind of, what needs to happen for such a clerical error to occur on a legally binding document? You said you understand, so maybe paint a scenario for us. Yeah. Well, uh, you see, the, the, most, the, most, the, the, only, the only explanation that makes sense, even do, it was not uh, an official uh, pronouncement, but the, the rumors going around, which I am yet to assess whether it's true or not, is this. Uh, on that very day that the judgment was, 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 was pronounced, the judgment of Bauchi Street was also pronounced. So, what people around the quarters of the, the, the judiciary, some of them are saying, as I already mentioned, not an official statement is this. The judgment of Bauchi State was pronounced, and also the judgment of uh, Kano State was pronounced. So, the people typing, the, the, uh, the people that type kind of uh, Bauchi State judgment made the mistake of copying a judgment and pasting it without without really uh, changing the, the pronouncement of the Street uh, uh, Tribunal judgment. So that page was, but even though with that pronouncement, you, you, you have to ask how is it that the, the, the case number of, of Kano Street was in the judgment. So as I said, it was a blunder, and I think it is only the judiciary that can make uh, Explanation. Some people are saying, most especially from the quarters of the NMPP, that the judgment was initially written against the APC, and they allege it was later changed, and the pronouncement was or was made. Okay, so uh, uh, Ismail, Ismail, I want to understand. Um, when a judgment is read out in court. It is written, typed, printed. The judge holds it himself, takes it to court, sits down and reads it. It is that same judgment that a judge reads that is now duplicated and given to the interested parties. So it's not a situation of after the judge read it, they went to type it. I, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm... Just, you know, my, my, my instinct, you know, and logic is telling me that the judge would have written that judgment and that is what is, is duplicated. So where is the copy and paste coming from? That's, that's how it was supposed to be. And if you read the judgment very well, you would understand that there are three judges that make the judgment and each and every judge was supposed to make his own a different judgment and then the three judgment will come together that's how it was supposed to be and for people that were in the court when that pronouncement was made on that particular day will on the will you believe with me when i said when the living judge was reading that uh, that particular judgment it was clearly it, it, those in the court will clearly have clearly seen where uh, the leading judge was will pick up papers, read the judgment, and then give it to the uh, the other two judges. This is to 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 uh, make a clear picture of what you just you just mentioned. That is how it was supposed to be. But for those of us that are following of the train, we'll understand that the judgment was supposed to be out maybe immediately or a day after the judgment was pronounced. But it took the Court of Appeal four days to release this 
through satisfied uh, copy of the judgment we are talking about. So that will tell you that either the judgment was was not was not fully ready when the the uh, the, All right. the the court pronounced okay. it, or it can happen out. Okay, Ismail, uh, 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 stay with me because uh, Ladipo Johnson is ready for us. Uh, 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 Mr. Ladipo Johnson is a lawyer. He's also the national auditor of the NNPP and spokesman for the NNPP's uh, uh, defunct presidential campaign council. Uh, Ladipo Johnson, thank you very much uh, for your time. I know you're having a, a busy day. Um, the, your party, the New Nigeria People's Party, is calling on the National Judicial Council uh, to investigate the judgment delivered in, on its appeal. Uh, your party is stating that the CTC of the judgment of the appeal court shows that the Kano State governorship election uh, was won by your candidate governor, Abba Yusuf, what possible outcome is the NNPP seeking from the NJC? Uh, are you suggesting that the NJC reverse the court judgment? Thank you very much. Good evening. Um, I do apologize because I'm in an airport lounge, so I'm trying not to be a nuisance to the people where I don't want to um, raise my voice. I hope you can hear me. Loud and clear. Um, the, yes, the bottom line is that we feel that the NJC must investigate the matter because it is scandalous to have such conflicts within the lead judgment. Uh, um, I overheard my brother in the studio mentioning to you that, um, yes, the judgment came in on Friday and um, really with an electoral appeal where we only have 14 days, we would have expected that we would have gotten the certified true copy almost immediately, or at least the next day. That hasn't, that didn't happen until, was it yesterday or the day before, or four days after. Now, the NJC must investigate how it is that that sort of mistake or whatever happened happened for the registrar or the chief registrar or the court of appeal to come out and say that there was a clerical error that is not a clerical error you understand we're talking about um paragraphs yeah and we're talking about the conclusion of the judgment which i know you read out earlier now if you're looking at all that then there must be an investigation. If the, the CTC that came out, the first one, um, and that the NMPP spoke about, yes, it came out from the right source. It came out from the Court of Appeal. Nobody did a CTC anywhere else, and you don't even need to be questioning that because you've seen that the registrar has subsequently said he wants us to return the CTC. So it shows that it emanated from the Court of Appeal. All right. So, so you, now, you, 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 don't, you don't see any basis for clerical error. Um, yeah, so what do you think happened yeah. here? What do you think happened here if it wasn't a clerical error? No, 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 no. What, what happened? Let me tell you what the average man believes happened is that there was probably some other judgment and there was one change or the other and um, I, I heard you discussing with the man in, um, earlier, now we're well, cutting and pasting. Yes, that is what I believe happened. That is what I believe happened. And it is a shame and it is, uh, it, 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 I'm a legal practitioner as well. We're at a very bad place at the moment with the reputation of the legal profession and the judiciary in particular at this moment in time. And that is why we're calling for the NJC. As to the retracting of the first CTC, Chief Wale Olati has written a strongly worded letter to the Chief Registrar of the Court of Appeal that, sorry, we don't, we are not returning anything. In fact, the party itself has filed a notice of appeal based on that. Because if you have 14 days and the court has taken four days away from it, you have 14 days to uh, appeal. Now, if you return that, they've asked us to return it, it's now seven days. 
That leaves how many days for you to prepare your appeal, your notice of appeal. It doesn't make sense. It's scandalous. All right. And okay. The, what, what, what do you think is responsible, Ladipo Johnson? Because um, the NNPP is not alone in this, uh, um, in this situation. Even in the Imo governorship election, they had to organize a protest um, regarding the, the delayed release of the CTC um, uh, of the results of the results by INEC, not by the courts, by INEC. Uh, we also have several uh, situations where judges or courts have been um, have delayed in re releasing CTCs. Uh, it didn't start this year. What do you think is is responsible on the part of the judiciary? For the time it's taken to Yeah, go on. Sorry about the noise. I told you earlier. I mean, you very soon. But let's go to a while. A while. Um, what are your thoughts on on the the you know the questions that uh, Ladipo Johnson and NPP by extension, uh, are raising about uh, the judiciary. You've heard him say that the lawyer uh, has written to the chief registrar of the Court of Appeal as a very strongly worded letter, and they're not returning the CTC. Uh, they've co proceeded to file a notice of appeal, but they have a problem with how long it's taken uh, for that CTC to be released. How well are you there? Well, actually, actually, in this case, I, I, I fully reason with what NNPP did. And I think they did what is right. One, they did what is right. You see, the, the, the Court of Appeal also made a mistake by not releasing, whether deliberately or not, by not releasing that document on time, because we are talking of 14 days, and their lawyers need time to study the judgment before they will respond and go to the Supreme Court. That was very, very wrong also. I don't know what error was that from the, uh, from the Court of Appeal. And also by the NNPP writing to the Court of Appeal saying that they are not going to release the document. For me, they are also right on that because what I also expected earlier was for them to go to, because I don't even think, so I'm not, I'm not uh, a, a legal practitioner, but some of, some of the lawyers I, um, I listen to are, are of the opinion that the Court of Appeal don't even have the right or the jurisdiction to change or to correct that mistake if, 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 if it's earlier, if earlier made. What NNPP was supposed to do was to go to uh, the Supreme Court just as, as they did, and then it was the Supreme Court might decide to either affirm what was written on that document or it will ask the, the document or it will ask for right. reinterpretation or interpretation from the Court of Appeal. So I think what the NPP did was, was right for me. And that's what it was supposed to be done. OK. Oh, well, uh, but just keep a pause now but while I go back to Ladipo Johnson. Mr. Johnson, if you can hear me. Uh, um, uh, what do you think is responsible for this delay? Is it um, that they had some issues, maybe power supply, or it's the judgment was so you know, voluminous, it took them, I think, about 64 pages some time to, to print and photocopy enough for, for you guys? I don't know. What do you think is responsible for that? I'm sorry that I'm laughing, sir. Um, I, I don't think that you can say the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal has um, alternative power sources. What? Look, this, it, we're, we're trivializing this matter. You understand? The issue is not now, is not even the fact that it was um, given to us um, maybe four days into uh, into when it should have been given it after when it should have been given it to us. The issue is that you have a conflicting judgment. Yeah, but you you ra you raised you raised the point you raised the point, Lightbo Johnson, and I just want to probe yeah. you know why what the party thinks because it's an issue, it's a problem, and it's a conversation we need to have uh, about the delay. We saw it even before the yes, elections I in releasing sensitive documents no, to parties. No, if, if if it is. If I have to answer that, I'll simply say it's either in uh, inefficiency or the fact that um, they may, maybe they were still adjusting whatever they had to adjust. Okay. 
All right. You what about what about order twenty three? Just quickly because of time, sir. Uh, order order twenty three because you said you're not returning the document to uh, the court of appeal. That's what your party is you saying. Just said. Order, well, order twenty three, rule four of the court of appeal handbook, yeah. empowers uh, the court yeah. to correct any clerical error once detected by the court or any of the parties in the matter. And so you are bound. We yes, are bound by that. That is if that is that is if it is a clerical error. A clerical error, she, he, you understand, dollars, pounds, naira, that's clerical, not two, three paragraphs in concluding the judgment of a court of appeal. If that you believe, if you believe that error. the court's judgment was in favor of your candidate, Governor Abba Yusuf, why are you heading to the Supreme Court? You can just simply go back no, no, to no, Governor no, House no. and have a party. Hang on, hang on, because... The court has to clear many things. The Supreme Court will now be forced to look at the entire thing in a holistic manner. The Supreme Court will be forced to look at it in a holistic manner. There are things that we disagree with. Look, let me tell you one of it is that the issue of membership that they've been shouting about and everything at the at the or at the tribunal itself the tribunal spoke on it and found that it had no jurisdiction to to hear it because it's an internal um is matter of the party now that wasn't cross appeal and yet the court of appeal now founded its whole decision on what wasn't before it okay ladipo johnson because of time finally um, have you seen the new CTC of that judgment released by the Court of Appeal, um, which <laughs> states the, 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 the lead judgment said, uh, quote, therefore I find no merit in this appeal, which is liable to be and is hereby dismissed. The judgment of the tribunal petition number blah, 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 APC versus INEC, uh, delivered on 20th day of September 2023, as the first one, uh, is hereby affirmed from the tribunal. Uh, the sum of one million naira is hereby awarded as cost in favor of the first respondent against the appellant, that's uh, a governor by use of an NPP. Have you seen the new, the, the, the new review CTC? What do you say to it? So that, that sounds like um, what was read out or part of what was read out initially on Friday last week. There's nothing new to admit to that. To that. I don't need to see the CTC. Like I didn't need to see the CTC that first came out, except for the fact that the press brought it to our notice. That there was conflict, right. and Leonard um, and um, um, seniors in the bar at the bar, like Chief Femi Falano, spoke about it. And um, it, it is um, because my plane, my flight is boarding now. Okay, it please. is something that um, not just going to the Supreme Court, but the NGC must investigate it. All right, and find out why. All right, that happened. We have to go. We also have to board Thank the you. next five topic. But well, thank you very much. Maybe next time. We'll talk about the legal maxim applicable, as the judges said, in this new CTC is applicable to this uh, case, ex nihilo nihil fit, uh, which means nothing comes from nothing or from nothing, you nothing comes. Any, and on the saying that your candidate was not sponsored by his party, without sponsorship, he cannot be a member of the party. And uh, that, obviously, uh, there are many Supreme Court <laughs> decisions regarding that. Thank we you very much. Uh, Ladipo Johnson, smile. Well, gentlemen, thank you for your time. Thank you for having us. All right, ex nihilo nihil fit. We all becoming lawyers gradually. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll have some more conversations. Stay with us.